Welcome, my name is Tim, and in this short video, I'm going to guide you through all the proper steps to troubleshoot an open winding in a blower motor of a gas furnace. Now, to begin with, we're going to click on the thermostat selector switch to ensure that the thermostat's calling for heat. Now, when we do this, it'll not only turn it to the heat position, but it'll also turn up the temperature setting above the room temperature. We're going to need to refer to the procedure guide after each step here at the top. So now that we've done this, we're going to click OK. Next, we need to remove the cover from the furnace and take a brief inventory of which electrical loads are operating. However, when you do this, the door switch is going to open its contacts. Now, the door switch is located right here on the right. And basically, when the door is removed, it breaks power to the furnace. So obviously, nothing's going to run at that point. So to reestablish power to the furnace, we're going to need to tape that door switch in. Click on this piece of tape up here. And that will close the contacts of the door switch and ensure that 120 volts is reaching the furnace. Click OK after we've done this. Now next is the inducer running. Well, the inducer is the first component that should start after the thermostat calls for heat. And as we can see by the spinning blue arrows, uh, the inducer is in fact running. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide up here. Next, we're going to want to reboot the system. Uh, what can happen in many cases, the integrated furnace controls will lock out operation if the unit goes off on a safety switch or if it attempts usually around three ignition attempts. Uh, after failure to ignite or a safety cycling a few times, the IFC will lock out operation. So we need to reset that by rebooting the power to the unit. So click on the service switch and just click reboot and be ready to look at the loads and determine which ones are operating. Click OK. Now we're going to look at the burners and the igniter. Well, the igniter comes on and the burners light off. Uh, so yeah, the burner actually comes on. So in answer to our procedure guide question, does the hot surface igniter glow and heat up? Well, yes, it does. Do the burners light? Well, yeah, they lit. there they are. Next, do the burners continuously run? Well, let's observe them for a little bit. If the burners are to cycle off quickly, within seven seconds, that usually indicates a flame sensing problem. But in this case, uh, they ran a little longer than that, so they're not continuously running, no. However, they are running between 10 and 60 seconds, so we're gonna click yes. Next, we're gonna pull the filter out just to check it. Uh, if the filter's dirty, this, this would result in the high limit cycling the furnace off. So let's just check the filter, click on the filter, and click remove. And we can inspect it for cleanliness, and it looks really clean. So yes, the filter's clean. Next, we need to look at the fan motor or the blower motor. And as evidenced by these blue arrows in the stationary position, the blower motor is not running. Now, if you have speakers, you'll also be able to hear it running. So we're going to click no that the blower motor is not running. Now, before we make any voltage checks, let's take a look at the circuitry a little bit. The blower motor is powered out of this IFC right here, or integrated furnace control. So it's possible that we have a malfunction within the IFC that's not sending power to the blower, or it's possible that the blower motor's faulty, or even its capacitor. So our next step is to see if the IFC is sending 120 volts to the blower motor and capacitor. So we're gonna place the leads on the red lead going to the blower motor, and our black lead is gonna to go to the neutral connection. And we can see here we have 120 volts coming out of the IFC going to the blower connections. So that verifies the IFC is doing its job here. So we're gonna click yes in the procedure guide. And our next step is to take some resistance and capacitance checks on both the motor and the capacitor. To do this, however, you're gonna to need to turn the power off. So click on the service switch and turn it off. Again, you're going to need to de-energize power when you're using the ohm meter or the capacitance check. Click OK. Now our next step is to isolate the capacitor. But before you do this, you want to discharge it. Now in the simulator here, the capacitor has already been discharged. So we're going to click on the capacitor and disconnect the wires from it. Okay, and you can rotate and see that we've got the wires disconnected at this point. Once we've done this, click OK on the procedure guide. And we're going to measure the capacitance value of the capacitor to see if it's functioning properly. Place the leads across the terminals on the capacitor. And when we do that, 
we have 10 microfarads. Now this particular capacitor is in fact rated for 10 microfarads, so the capacitor is good. So we're gonna click yes up here on the procedure guide, and now we're gonna check the blower motor itself. Um, we need to, again, disconnect one side of the blower motor. Um, so we can just simply disconnect the red or white or both wires if you like. So click on it and let's click disconnect wires on the menu and we can see the two leads going to the blower motor have been disconnected now. Next, we're gonna check resistance of the blower motor's windings. And we're gonna begin with the start winding. Now, the start winding is placed between the common connection here, the white wire going to the blower, and the top brown wire here on the capacitor. That's the start winding. The run winding is placed between the red wire and the white common wire. So we'll begin with the start winding and we're gonna just measure resistance across it. Now we should obtain a measurable resistance here. And when we place the leads on the glowing orange hot spots across the start winding, we can see we have infinite resistance or OL on the digital meter, which indicates that the start winding is in fact open and the motor is gonna to need to be replaced. Now prior to replacing the blower motor, if you have some confusion on those resistance readings, let's take the meter back out of the toolbox for just a second and place them back across the start winding as we previously did. Uh, again, we're placing one here at the capacitor connection on the brown wire and we're placing the other lead at the common connection. Um, again, we can see that we have an open winding, but let's pull out the wiring diagram here on the bottom left. And when we do that, you'll be able to see the placement of your meter leads here at the bottom left of the diagram. Uh, you can verify that you placed them in the right location. Uh, in fact, this is the start winding right here. So we've just measured continuity or whether or not there's a path for current to flow across the start winding, and we verified that there in fact was not. Uh, don't hesitate to launch the diagram to review the placement of your meter leads. This will really help you a lot. Now to replace the motor, simply click on it and click replace on the menu. Once you've done this, you're gonna to need to reestablish power back to the furnace. So it's gonna be necessary to turn the disconnect back on or otherwise nothing's gonna run. So after doing that, we're gonna go up to the residence and make sure that heat is being delivered to the space. Now we can see from the graphic here at the floor register that heat is in fact reaching the residence. So we've solved the problem here. Now, if you wanna review any of the steps that you took in this procedure, simply click this top left icon and you'll be able to review each step in the process. Well, good luck on all your future service calls, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. You can try our on demand VR enabled learning for HVAC by signing up for a free trial. Go to interplaylearning.com to get started.